So uh, right as I was paused and erasing all of this, um, my neighbor's cat walked by the window. Cam will growl. I'm going to try my best to make sure it doesn't get more than a bark. There it was. Uh, and I apologize if it does, and I'm just going to start this video. So if I seem annoyed, it's probably because I've done this video seven times now. Cam, stop. Okay, so we just went over the vocabulary to help us understand these words, mean, medium, mode, range, minimum, maximum. And we're going to do the core trials in a second. But um, what I did here is I collected some data, and I'm going to now analyze this data. So uh, I already put the data in order. Sometimes when you collect the data, it's not going to automatically come in order. So you will have to put the or in order from lowest to biggest. Um, age of pets, these are the people that live in my little complex here. Um, they all have pets, and these are all the ages of their pets. I just happen to know a lot of my neighbor's pets. Um, it's one of my passions. As you know, I'm kind of a dog person. And so <laughs> I just happen to know these things. Uh, this is Chester, this is Banjo, this is Cam, this is my neighbor's cat Snickers, this is my other neighbor. My neighbor has um, two cats of six years old. I forget their names, um, but they're both six. So then we've got um, an older cat down the way um, named Lucy, I think. Um, my neighbor's cat Morgan does not like Cam scratched his nose. And then we've got a little old lady named um, Fancy. She's Cam's girlfriend. Her name's Fancy. I only have nine pieces of data here because I only have nine um, pets that I know the age of uh, in my complex. So I couldn't do 10, but you are going to be collecting 10 pieces of data here. Okay. So we've got our pets here, and I've got a number line. I'm going to show you how to graph this data on a number line because you will have to do this. To graph this data on a number line, you create a number line that represents the values. So if you're collecting things like income or salary, your numbers are obviously going to have to be up in the thousands and stuff. So your numbers are going to be different, but that's okay. You can start your number line anywhere you want. Mine just has to be lower from talking about age of pets. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, and I'm going to come through and I'm going to put an X um, that represents each one of these people or pets. <laughs> so I'll start with two um, and I'll put an X right above the number nine. Now it says above the number line. Okay. Then um, I don't have any threes, but I do have two, so we'll do an X, and then we'll do another one on top of it. Notice that I'm stacking the Xs on top of each other. So if I had three ages here, I would go and just keep stacking it like that. We've got a five-year-old. We've got two kitties whose names I'm forgetting that are six-year-olds. We're going to jump on over to Lulu or Lucy. I can't remember which one. Here's Morgan. And then there's my fancy girl. There's my data. Okay. I put X's on top of all of these numbers that represent each one of these pets. Um, you can see the ones that are stacked. You're just the ones that appear more often. That's how you graph this on a singular number line. Now, for part two, you're going to have to graph a scatter plot. And that's going to be two pieces of data that's going to have Y and X axis. When you're just collecting one type of data for part one, you only graph it like this on a number line. They call this a number plot. Um, I've seen it called a line plot. Um, so either one, it works. Okay, now I've got these different types of measures of center and then the minimum and the maximum down there to help me with the range. Um, so we can you figure these out. So the mean is probably going to be the trickiest one, so I put it first so I make sure that we spend time on it. Um, mean is when I find the average of all the numbers. To find the average of all the numbers, I have to add all of these numbers up and then divide by the number that there are. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I know there's going to be 9 numbers. Now, I can see that you can see a little part down here, so I'm just going to do some quick math over here. I know that 9 is going to be my denominator. My numerator is going to be whatever this adds up to. So we're going to do a little bit of mental math in our heads to add these up, okay? So I got a 10 here. So we're just going to do that real quick to know that I've counted the 10. I've got two fours and sixes. So that's a 10, and that's a 10. That brings me to 30. Okay, these tick marks actually aren't looking for me. So I can just look at my commas. Sorry. So I'll do, um, I'll do like an X. So we're at 30, okay? Um, then I'll take 11 and we'll make it 41. Now I'll take 12 and make it 53. 
I'll take two to make it 55. And one more five to make it 60. Huh, that worked out so much. So my fraction is 60 ninths. Now I'm going to simplify it before I put it in that mean box. I know nine can go into 65 times. Nope. Six times. Because 54 with six left over. So six and six ninths. And I can step, uh, simplify six ninths to be two thirds. So my mean is six and two thirds. That means the average, the average age of the pets that live in my complex is six years old and some change. That's pretty good, pretty good average here, I'd say. Okay, the median, the median comes when I cross the numbers off. So I'm gonna erase my little things because we're gonna have to do it again, okay? So we're gonna cross them off coming into the middle, so. One, two, three, and I get down. Now, notice when I got down, there was no middle here. It's going to be a middle for when you're at 10, but there's no middle here. Um, and so that means that, that means that my number is just going to be the average of those two numbers. That didn't work out right. I skipped a number. Yeah, wait, hold on. Because it's odd, there should be a middle. You guys with 10, you're not going to have a middle. So you're going to have to find the average of the two numbers in the middle like I was about to do. But I skipped four. It's easier to cross them out. I was trying to avoid doing that. But no, well, here we are. Crossing them out. Six. Doesn't change my answer. So my median is six. That was my middle. Now my mode here. My mode is the number that shows up the most. Well, I've got two numbers that show up the most, don't I? I have four and six. So I'm going to do that by writing four and then comma at six to show that both of them are modes. Now notice with my measures of center that six is coming up quite a lot, isn't it? So when I go to say like what's a good center point, I would say six because it's not only my like my mode and it's a median, but it's also when you average it out close to six. So that would be a really great idea for a measure of center. Okay. So now we're gonna talk min, max, and range. So the minimum we can see is the smallest number. Minimum is the smallest number, so that is two. Maximum is my largest number, that is 12. My range is the maximum minus the minimum, so 12 minus two is 10. So that means that the ages in this complex span amongst 10 numbers. So there's a 10 point, 10 age point spread here. Um, so that means that at any time, if I encounter the, the, an, an animal, there could be about 10 more, depending where it is, 10 more above it, 10 below it, if it's the youngest, oldest, it's five years old, and I go, oh, there's probably about five older than you or five younger than you. So it's a good way to start making assumptions about the data. Okay, so I found the um, range. Now let's talk about the quartiles. So I'm going to erase my line plot because we're gonna use the same number line here to make my box plot. Um, to make my box plot, I need the minimum, maximum, the median, and then I need the two quartiles. Let's start with um, getting the mean, minimum and maximum on there. So the minimum was two and I put a nice line at two and the max was 12. Okay, so we're just going to start with the lines. The median was six. So we're going to start with a line at six. Okay, and now I need to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Now, to find those, so this is why I didn't want to do the tick marks because I now have to do it again. Um, so to find those, I know that this six is my middle. That's my median. Okay, and I'm just going to underline it to make sure that I remember that that is my middle, my median. From this number to this number, I'm now going to count in again until I land on a middle number of that set, and that's going to be my lower quartile. So starting here, you go in one and boom. Four, four is going to be my Q2. This one was my Q1, this is my Q2, and I know this is my Q4, we'll find my Q3 in a second. So, Four is where this line is going to go. And we can start building now my box. So my minimum is going to be the whisker. 
this is starting my box and then we're going to have to finish my box by finding my q3 starting here at this six and this four we count in and boom, 10 10 is my upper quartile my q3 so that goes there and this box goes all the way out here and boom that's how we build a box and whisker plot for this set of data and we can start looking at it and start talking about, well, what does this show us? Well, do you notice how big this part of the box is and how small this part of the box is? This is where we start asking questions like, why? Why? And what can also help us with that is like, well, everything's telling me that the middle should be six, but the mean here is a little bit bigger than six. All of that is because this big gap between six and 10 and the fact that we get all the way up to 12. That means that we've got a lot of numbers on the bigger side that is weighing this data down. It stretches it out here, which starts pulling the median up. If I wanted to say the actual middle, I'd say the actual middle is six, but because I've got these oldies, it's pulling this number up a little bit more than maybe what would be a good representation of this data. And that's what's really helpful about things like mean, median, mode, quartiles, range, it starts giving us a little bit of an insight of what data actually means. So, and maybe helps us prevent bias. So, this is how you are going to do part one. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about any of the particular parts, please make sure that you are messaging me and letting me know. Um, I will put out more videos in a little bit to help you with part two and making a scatter plot. Like, that's going to be fun. And also a video on how to make your survey to send out to your peers. Okay, awesome. Thanks guys so much. Email me if you have any questions.